Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover decimal expanded form, word form, and standard form. So let's start with expanded form. Now when I say expanded form, what we're going to do is expand these numbers out to show the value of each digit. Expanded form really helps our overall number sense and understanding of numbers. So let's jump into number one where we have 75 hundredths. Now there's a place value chart at the top of your screen. I'm going to place that number in the chart. That way we can really break it down and see uh, what the value of each digit is going to be. In the case of number one, we start with a zero. So this is showing us that we don't have a whole number. So zero would go in our whole number um, portion of the place value chart. Then we have our decimal. Now the tenths place, and we have a seven. Then we have a five, which is sitting in the hundredths place. So we can clearly see that we have seven tenths and five hundredths. So when we put this in expanded form, there are two options. We can use decimals or we can use fractions. They are equivalent to each other, um, so it doesn't really matter, but it's good to know both. So I will do both here. I'll start with decimals. And we will start with the greatest valued digit, which is going to be that seven. So the digit furthest to the left. And that seven is worth seven tenths. Plus that five has a value or is worth five hundredths. And that's how you would write number one in expanded form using decimals. A common mistake would be to write seven tenths plus five tenths, but that five, you can't have two digits sitting in the same place. That five is in the hundredths place. So we need this placeholder zero to push that five over to the hundredths. Now, as far as fractions go, we would write seven tenths plus five hundredths. These are equivalent right here. One's in decimal form, one's in fractional form, and these are equivalent. So these are the exact same thing. One is obviously in decimal form and one is in fractional form. So on to number two, where we have 75 thousandths. Now it looks very similar to number one, but the seven is in a different place and the five is in a different place. So we do not have a whole number. We have a zero in the tenths and our seven is in the hundredths place this time. So our decimal is going to be seven hundredths. Notice we had to use that zero to push the seven to the hundredths place, plus five thousandths. So we need two zeros to push the five over to the thousandths place, a five in the, or a zero in the tenths and a zero in the hundredths. Fractional form, well, seven hundredths plus five thousandths. All right, on to number three and four, where we're going to have a whole number um, and a decimal. So for number three, we have 15 and four tenths. So let's um, put the whole number in expanded form first. So start with the greatest valued digit, the digit furthest to the left, and that happens to be this one. So what is the value of that one? Well, it has a value of 10 plus this five in the ones place has a value of five plus four tenths here. So I'll write it in decimal form first. So we have the one, the five, and the four included, and we showed the value of each. So fractional form, the whole numbers are going to stay the exact same. The decimal, however, is going to be four tenths. On to number four, we have three and 207 thousandths. So we start with the three here, which has a value of three because it's in the ones place. So three plus the value of this two, which is two tenths. Now the hundredths place, we have a zero, so we do not need to include that in our expanded form. The seven is in the thousandths, so plus and we need two zeros, I'll squeeze in here, seven thousandths there. Uh, a common mistake for number four would be 
3 plus 2 tenths, and then writing the 7 in the hundredths place. You need to be very careful with placeholder zeros and what place the numbers are sitting in. So that 7 has to be in the thousandths. So this would be incorrect. All right, and as far as fractional, the whole number, fraction, decimal, it doesn't matter. Whole numbers are whole numbers. So leave it as is there, plus 2 tenths. And we end with 7 thousandths. So there you have it. There's how you put decimals into expanded form. Show the value of each digit. You can use decimals or fractions. Next, we're going to move to word form. Now, when it comes to decimal word form, it's very important to think first name, last name. Now, we use that same hint or thought process when we wrote whole numbers in word form. It's going to look a little bit different when it comes to decimals, but it's going to be very helpful. So let's jump into number one here, where we actually have two examples. We have this first number here, and then the second one here. Now those may look very similar, but they're actually, um, they're going to be different as far as the word form goes and how you say those decimals. They are not the same. So let's use the place value chart at the top of your screen in order to break these numbers down and see what the word forms are going to be. So the first one, we do not have a whole number. So we have a zero, we have a seven in the tenths, and a five in the hundredths. The second one, we do not have a whole number. We have a zero in the tenths, a seven in the hundredths, and a five in the thousandths. So let's write the first one in word form, so this top one here. So we need to think first name, last name. Now when it comes to first name, we just need to say this number as is. So that's a 75, so that's going to be the first name, 75. Now the last name is going to be wherever that decimal ends, so the place it ends. And in the case of the top one, it ends in the hundredths place. So that's the last name. First name 75, last name hundredths. And that's how you say that decimal, and therefore what you write down, and you have word form, so 75 hundredths. The bottom example, it's actually going to have the same exact first name. Read this number as is. We have a 75. So 75. Now the last name is going to be different because the bottom one ends in the thousandths place. So that's going to be 75 thousandths. All right, on to number two. So first name, read this number as is, and that's just a nine. Last name, where does that decimal end? It ends in the tenths place. So you would say that nine tenths. Now number three and four, we have whole numbers. So there's going to be a very important word that represents that decimal within our word form. So read the whole number as is, um, so we have a 15, that's what we're going to start with. I'm actually going to section this off. So we'll start with 15. Now when we see this decimal, we need to put the word and. So 15 and, that separates our whole number uh, portion from the decimal portion. Then we just apply the first name, last name. So read this number as is, 40. Two. And the last name, wherever that decimal ends, and in this case it ends in the hundredths place, so we have 15 and 42 hundredths. Lastly, number four, so we'll start with the whole number, read it as is, three. And remember, the very important word to represent that decimal is and. So three and, let's read this number as is for the first name. So 207, 200, 
seven, that's the first name, and the last name is where that decimal ends. So what place does that seven sit in? Well, it ends in the thousandths. So let's wrap up number three here with thousandths. So we would read that number three and 207 thousandths. So there you have it. There's how you write decimals in word form. Remember, first name, last name. Lastly, I will cover standard form. So when it comes to standard form, that just means writing something out in number form. We're writing the number using only digits. And in the case of this video, numbers one and two, we're starting with word form and converting to standard form. Numbers three and four, we're starting with expanded form and converting to standard form. So let's jump into number one, where we have 62 thousandths. So the most important thing with number one here is making sure the 62 is in the right um, in the right places, so the six and the two. So we do not have a whole number portion of this decimal. So we know we have a zero and then a decimal. If we were to just write 62, this is going to be the most common mistake here. Now this is actually 62 hundredths because it's ending in the hundredths. Remember, word form, first name, write the number as is, so 62 and then thousandths, that means the 62 has to end in the thousandths place. So this would not be correct. That would be 62 hundredths. So what we need to do, we need a placeholder zero to bump that 62 so it ends in the thousandths place. And this is going to be 62 thousandths. So let's try number two, where we have three and 16 hundredths. So let's break this down. In number two, we do have a whole number, three. So let's just write our three here. Remember, and represents our decimal. So three decimal, 16 hundredths. So the first name is 16. That means we write that number as is. Now that 16 needs to end in the hundredths place because that's our last name here of that decimal portion. So 16 hundredths, a 16 that needs to end in the hundredths place. So let's try this out. And that works, our 16 ends in the hundredths. So this would be correct and match our word form of three and 16 hundredths. Always double check your standard form with the word form and make sure they match. So let's actually check again. So we have three and 16 hundredths. So we're good to go there. Number three, we have expanded form. So we're going to start with this 40. Work your way left to right. So left to right. So we start with a four that has a value of 40. So we know we're starting in the tens place. Now we just work our way right. So after the tens place, we have the ones place. So we need to see if we have anything that has a value um, in the ones place. This one here is going to be uh, in the ones place. So we have 41. Now after the ones place, we have a decimal. Then comes the tenths place. So we need to check our expanded form. We can just go in order. Um, they aren't mixed up, it always goes in order, so the tenths place would come next. And we don't have anything um, that is going to be sitting in the tenths place, so we put a zero. Next, we have the hundredths place, and we do have something that has a value that's going to sit in that hundredths place. We have a three, because we have a three with a value of three hundredths, so let's put our three here. Next, we have the thousandths place. And we have this seven here in the thousandths place. So we can put our seven. So let's double check. We have a four with a value of 40. So we're good here. We have a one with a value of one. We do not have any tenths. We went from the ones place to the hundredths. So we have a zero there. We need that placeholder zero to push the three and the seven to the correct place. So next we have a three with a value of three hundredths right there. And then we end with a seven in the thousandths, a seven that has a value of seven thousandths. So there we go, we are correct. And lastly, number four, we have expanded form here. 
um, and the decimal portion of this number um, is represented by fractions, which is fine. You can represent decimals using fractions or decimals. And we start with an eight with a value of 800. So let's write our eight out. And now we just go in order of our places. So next would be the tens place. So this five, let's see, is that going to sit in the tens place? Yes, because it has a value of 50. So a five. Next is the ones place. Well, if we go to the next number, we have two tenths. So we're going to have a two in the tenths place, which means we went from the tens straight to the tenths meaning we do not have any ones represented in our expanded form, so we need a zero there. After the ones, we have our decimal. And just like we talked about a second ago, we have two tenths. So a two with the value of two tenths needs to go in the tenths place. Lastly, we have a nine in the hundredths place. So after the tenths place comes the hundredths, so we can put our nine there and we included everything in our expanded form, but let's just double check. So 800 would be this eight here. So we're good here. A 50 or a five that has a value of 50 is right here. We do not have any ones, so we need to represent that with a zero. We need a placeholder zero. Then we have two tenths, which is right here, and nine hundredths, which is right here. So there you have it. There's how you write decimals in expanded form, word form, and standard form. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.